Blue Beetle Who Laughs Origin Entire story explored Hi this is Simon and welcome to another marvellous videos Always getting the shorter end of the stick tends to create resentment within people This resentment leads to vulnerability which makes them prime target for master manipulators and when these vulnerable people just happen to have super cool abilities in a world where evil goes beyond imagination it creates the perfect recipe for disaster So when the Blue Beetle fell to an infection that took away his moral compass he he became a key player in the destruction of the universe. And what made this so heartbreaking was not the fact that he was infected, but the fact that he was infected with the promise of releasing him from his status as a sidekick, only for him to become a puppet. In today's video, we will go over the strange infection that made the Blue Beetle laugh as we talk about everything that led to it and everything that followed. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. A horrifying infection that takes away your happiness to make you laugh. How Blue Beetle became a victim of a disastrous mind game. To understand this version of Jamie Ray's better, we need to get down to the root cause of one who made him a menace. DC's Dark Multiverse saga presented us with a verse situated below the prime multiverse that we know of. This reversal or dark multiverse has been created from all the wrong decisions, fears and nightmares of the people from the primary multiverse. And as a result, it is absolutely horrific. Each world is referred to as its negative counterpart. For example, Earth 2 becomes Earth negative 2. And needless to say, the events of this disintegrating verse are far from hopeful. This brings us to Earth negative 22, where Batman found his arch nemesis in the Joker once again. But this time, the Joker was dying as a result of his own Joker toxin. Prior to his death, the Joker tried to be the cause behind a chain of several deaths, while a hopeless Batman was made to witness them against his will. Ultimately, the Dark Knight put an end to the Joker's massacre by taking the latter's life, but he was never prepared for what was about to come. As the necrosis hit, the remnants of the toxin from the Joker's heart were released from his body, infecting Batman. As a result, Batman was infected, giving rise to a Dark Knight with the brains and abilities of the world's greatest detective, alongside the moral compass and menacing laughter of DC's most vicious antagonist. This culmination character went on to be known Known as the Batman Who Laughs. He ended up killing the Bat Family and the Justice League and eventually learned about the creator of the multiverse, Perpetua, and the existence of the Prime Multiverse thanks to the Bat God Barbados. This sparked a new motivation within the Batman Who Laughs, who began to dream of becoming the strongest being in the Omniverse and wished to invade the Prime Multiverse where he would turn everyone into their Jokerized versions. But he couldn't just barge in and do that, at least not in his current state. And so he picked six superheroes from the DC Universe we are familiar with, who would act as his puppets. And what better way to get people on your side when you have the mind-corrupting Joker toxin to aid you? His victims were Donna, Troy, Shazam, Supergirl, Commissioner Gordon, Hawkman, and Jamie Ray's Blue Beetle. What made the Blue Beetle a necessary pick was not not just the fact that his scarab was more powerful alien armor, it was also the fact that he had spent his life under the guise of being a weaker sidekick to the stronger Justice League. He had a hard time living up to the name of his predecessor, Ted Cord, who was the second Blue Beetle. Needless to say, he would have a weaker sense of self with respect to this, making him the perfect candidate for being corrupted by a menacing antagonist. The Batman who laughs orchestrated the entire ordeal while he was locked up underneath the dungeon in the Hall of Justice of the League. This was also some Something the League, including Batman, was unaware of. By this, we are referring to the Batman from Earth-1 in the Prime Multiverse. Prior to his capture, the Batman who laughs had laced some super-specific batarangs with the Joker toxin so that each batarang could infect the hero it was created for instead of being repelled by their superpowers. He wanted to harness the specific energies of each superhero and use them to make the Dark Multiverse collide with its primary counterpart. A one-shot issue known as the Infected Scarab walked us through Jamie Ray's journey from the be being a regular superhero to one of the deranged puppets working under the Batman Who Laughs. The story begins with the Blue Beetle battling someone far stronger than him. Jamie Ray's acknowledges the, the power of the Scarab, which was supposed to make monsters. 
In fact, the Beetle who came before him were apparently a lot more formidable as they decimated armies. Meanwhile, Jamie the Sidekick considered himself to be somewhat of a power ranger instead of a menacing force in battle. He wasn't very pumped about having to harness the powers of the world-eating scarab. As a good person, he always wanted to keep the alien power in check, only to finally learn that he needed more strength in this battle, a lot more. Completely overwhelmed in the fight, Jamie begs to get home while a boot squashes him. This boot belongs to none other than Batman, who laughs, a monster who seems like he's going to kill Jamie, and the Blue Beetle is not monster enough to stop his opponent. He cannot even release more of his own powers. Fortunately, this battle reveals itself to be a bad dream, as Jamie wakes up in his own room. Revealed that none of it is real, Jamie brushes his teeth and feels good about having woken up from such a terrible dream. However, a voice inside him lets him know that there is a lot more real than he thought it was. Jamie begins to think that he's losing his mind and gets ready to go to school. Too bad his school bus has left him behind. While he starts to run behind the bus, his friend Paco and Brenda find the situation to be funny, only for Jamie to suddenly transform into the Blue Beetle in broad daylight, because why would someone with his abilities need to take the bus in the first place? His friends are ticked off by this since the trio spends a considerable amount of effort trying to keep Jamie's superhero identity under wraps. As the bus reaches Frontier High School, Jamie's already waiting at the gates. Brenda lashes out at him for putting his own identity in jeopardy, but Jamie does not care anymore. He has saved dozens of lives in the past few days and, as such, feels entitled to a day off for his contributions. He heads out to enjoy his day, and his friends get to Ted Cord, hoping to find Jamie. Paco tries to get a sandwich from Cord's fridge when the floors suddenly open up, and it swallows Paco. The fall does not kill him as he manages to latch onto the floor, but Brenda lashes out at Jamie for his reckless behavior. Meanwhile, Jamie takes control of the blue beetle bug after incapacitating Ted Cord using a strange black goo that the blue beetle could suddenly produce. Brenda and Paco enter the blue beetle bug as they leave their location to fly out. However, their joyride comes to a quick end when they come across one of Jamie's initial villains, Ghostfire. Seeing him, Jamie immediately heads out to fight his opponent and acts way more aggressively than usual, with a voice in his head encouraging him to punish Ghostfire. Brenda and Paco notice something is seriously wrong, since the Blue Beetle seems to be going in for the kill. Jamie claims to have had enough of letting Ghostfire go by showing him mercy, while the Batman who laughs keeps fueling his newfound violence. Ghostfire keeps increasing his firepower to get an edge in the battle, but the Heat manages to do absolutely nothing to Jamie. Ghostfire begins to worry, while the Blue Beetle starts to experience a metamorphosis. He goes from being a sidekick and evolves into the protagonist as he says, I am the plague that blackens the sky, drowns out the wind, and devours the earth. Needless to say, this behavior is constantly encouraged by the Batman who laughs, who can clearly see his toxin taking over Jamie's mind as he fuels him to snuff out Ghostfire's flame once and for all. While the Blue Beetle gets more and more unhinged, he exclaims that he never wanted to become like this, proving that his true self is still within him. However, the Batman who laughs keeps reminding him of how he always wanted to unravel his true powers, and this infection does nothing to take his control away, as it merely unshackles him. Jamie realizes that something is wrong with him, but he soon begins to eat Ghostfire, much to the horror of his friends who cannot believe their eyes. Ghostfire's blood and its taste result in the Blue Beetle puking out the black goo, which lands on the Beetle Bug vehicle. Jamie feels disgusting about it, and the comics depict grotesque body horror for both plot purposes and shock value. Jamie's inner dialogue forces him to go back away from the fight because he knows that something is not right. He tries to run to the shadows for safety when the voice of the Batman who laughs keeps reminding him of how he is doing exactly what a bug is supposed to do and how nothing is wrong with him. As he metamorphosizes, Jamie frantically itches his own skin while the Batman who laughs relishes in his so-called development. Brenda and Paco follow Jamie in pursuit to find him in a dingy corner. They understand that something is wrong with Jamie's powers and try to head in to help him while Jamie asks them to stay away. Before he can be articulate, he ends up puking the same black 
goo all over again, which depicts the completion of his metamorphosis into the undefeatable evil bug. Although Jamie looks helpless, everything changes when Ghostfire attacks once more. He blasts at the three of them with his fire, and the sparks of their fight brings an end to the remnants of Jamie Ray's and the inner dialogue that tried to keep him sane by fighting the effects of the Joker toxin. A monstrous instinct takes over the Blue Beetle, who sheds Jamie Ray's to unleash his evil and true strength. And without his moral compass stopping him, the bug proves himself to be undefeatable, just like the Batman who laughs had predicted. While the other heroes start to get infected as well, the Blue Beetle who laughs becomes a key player once again, after Commissioner Gordon fights Superman in a suit created to go against the Kryptonian. Of course, Superman wins, and along with Batman, so he decides to take Gordon and the suit to the Fortress of Solitude, knowing that it is a place that the Batman, who laughs, does not know of. Soon the suit proves to be a Trojan horse, while inside the fortress, as the nanobots merge into one, giving rise to the Blue Beetle who laughs. Soon Superman and Batman realize that the infected Gordon never tried to defeat them. He just wanted them to get the suit into the fortress, which was the Trojan horse that got the Blue Beetle into the fortress. The bug soon hacks into the computers of the Batcave and incapacitates Batman and Superman. He did this not just to follow the plan, but also out of spite since these two heroes in particular always treated him as a kid and as their lackey. But finally, it was the Blue Beetle's time to hog the spotlight and show the true extent of his capabilities. It is revealed that the Batman who laughs wants to project a cosmic bat signal that will infect everyone on Earth. But to create that signal, they need to get a satellite made of dark metal to the Prime Universe. And the portal to allow this can only be opened using the six energy signatures of the members of the Secret Six. While Superman and Batman go to the heart of the fortress to activate the failsafe, Blue Beetle builds the necessary technology using energy from the Dark Multiverse to create the portal. However, the Scarab within him continues to fight the infection, as the Scarab is a separate entity from the Blue Beetle. And, after all, it is the Blue Beetle who laughs, not the Scarab who laughs. After Supergirl gets infected as well, the Secret Six assemble, and they use their combined energy signatures to open the portal. However, while Superman takes his fight outside Earth as he goes against Kara and Shazam, Batman deals with technology. He takes advantage of the Scarab and the Blue Beetle being separate entities, and as such, pulls out the Scarab from the Blue Beetle's spine. Using it, he takes control of the tower created by the Beetle, which has been used to open the portal. He harnesses the Scarab's power to destroy the portal, and Superman hurls the Dark Matter satellite into the sun. This leaves them with only one obstacle, the condition of the Secret Six. Oblivious to how to get rid of the infection, they find an unlikely ally in Lex Luthor, who uses a blade lace with the antidote for the toxin to free the Secret Six from their infections. Marvelous Verdict All's well that ends well may apply to Disney, but it surely did not apply here. You'd think that things would cool down after Blue Beetle and the others were cured of their infections and the downfall of the Prime Multiverse was stopped, but no. The Batman who laughs was way too ambitious to give up, and he ended up harnessing the powers of Dr. Manhattan to become the darkest knight and the strongest being in the universe. Too bad Jamie had to go back to being a sidekick to the League once again. But hey, sometimes you have to give up some things for the greater good. With that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of the Blue Beetle who laughs? Did you enjoy this video? If yes, and don't forget to like and comment on this video. Till then, goodbye and have a nice one.